Okay. All right. Good night, everyone. Good day, everyone. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. It's such a, you know, this amazing song. It's uh, it's such a thrill I feel when I get together with God's wonderful people. I'm not a singer, but I like the lyrics. It's a thrill to get together in this capacity, and we just give God thanks. Um, just a moment. Just a moment. Okay, sir. Then you wanna deal with that? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, sorry. Um, sorry, the doorbell is dry. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a privilege to meet with every everyone. Um, how was your day today? I hope blessed. Yes. Wonderful. 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 All right. So as we're getting started, let us um go before the one who guides us. Um, and just ask him to guide the proceedings tonight and that those who are on their way, that he, he would hasten their footsteps. All right? So let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we honor you, we bless you. This is the day you have made, we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Father, you are our loving, faithful God, and despite the challenges that we face at different points, you continue to um, to just guide us faithfully. Father, you are uh, love. And I thank you, God, that you've taught us how to love. Thank you, God, that you are the very embodiment, the very expression of love. Father, you, the word that we often quote is that you so love the world, you gave your own begotten son. Whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have, have everlasting life. Thank you, God, for the everlasting life um, that we now enjoy. I thank you, God, that in all that we're doing, you continue to, to lead us. You continue to guide us. You continue to bless us. You continue to give us your, your anointing. And God, we just um, commit ourselves to you anew tonight. We pray that you take away every distraction that would keep us from hearing what you would have for us to hear. And God, we just pray that tonight, uh, regardless of how many people may be here, uh, we just pray that we will just focus on you, keep keep our eyes fixed on you, the author, the finisher of our faith. And God, you've taken us to a higher plane than we've ever seen before. I pray, God, that in all of this, we will just keep keep ourselves grounded in your word because we can only go as far as your word uh, takes us. God, you are so loving and you're so merciful. You're so kind. And we just ask now that you go before us and any of us who might be going through a challenging time, I pray God that tonight by your Holy Spirit that you would just um, encourage us, encourage our hearts. Um, Father, you were tell us that in this, world, in this world we will have trouble, but we should be of good cheer because you've overcome the world. And so whatever challenges we may have in our lives, our challenges may be going on right now. Thank you that you, it's not unknown to you and that you are um, you are ever ready to uh, be there for us, ever ready to manifest your glory to us. Here, prayers, God, as we look to you with grateful hearts and pray tonight, saying thanks in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right. All right. Good. Okay. Everyone, again, I thank you for... Um, uh, thank God for his presence here, here with us. I just pray that tonight he would be um, he would be pleased to, to go for himself in, uh, in, um, among us. All right. Uh, as we've been doing of late, anyone have any, any testimony uh, to, to share as our testimony, praise report, et cetera, et cetera? Anyone? Uh, are you intentionally muted, Mel? Because I see your lips moving. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, praise report. For me, every day is just a wonderful day for me. You know, when you come off that turnpike, or you know, it's it's a praise when I get off mm -hmm. because I was coming home not like two a whole and a half ago, and just like last week, I got cut off again. You know, and I'm saying, God, why on Tuesdays? 
It's like two days I'm looking for a cutoff on Tuesday. But you know, it is it is wonderful. You got to give God thanks and praise every day. I mean, every day is a praise report for me. So praise God, people. Amen. Praise God from whom our blessings flow. Yes, sir. All right. All right, anyone else? Yes, I just want to, um, I'm walking in a season and I'm, I'm just asking the Holy Spirit if, you know, there's some season that you walk in and, and sometimes it's repeated. You get a chance to re, re-step, re-walk that journey. And the season, it is such an interesting season, but it's a season where um, it's like I'm in a classroom. And um, and God in... Sir, sir, sir. Pardon me, pardon me. <laughs> pardon me. Go ahead, sir. Yeah, yeah, so I'm saying God in all his wisdom and his goodness. Um, I woke up today's, yeah, I woke up Monday morning. I was exposed to something that I was terribly allergic to. It um, has never happened before, but my eyes were as red as strawberries. Wow. And um, I couldn't figure out why it was, but... You know, as I, as the day progressed, I found out what it was. But I'm just saying that um, the goodness of God, how merciful He is, and there are times when you walk in different steps, different stages. Um, he, he He supplies you with whatever you need to take you to the next step. And um, it's the, the season is a season of really leaning into Him, and um, and trusting Him putting my hands in his hands, knowing that I, I can't, I can't do, I don't even, I don't want to do it without you. I can't do it without you. I don't want to do it without you. And it is so wonderful. Sunday's, Sunday's script, um, lessons, lesson about the, the butterfly and the different stages of the uh, different season of the different journeys. And I remember a story that I I held dear. It was about the, the when it reached a cocoon stage, when that beautiful bu butterfly it was time for him to come up because he was made to fly. And I remember the story of a man just what because he loved butterflies and he saw the butterfly in the cocoon and how that little butterfly was just struggling to get out of the cocoon and he used his little scissors and slit the cocoon a little bigger for the butterfly to um, come out. But he didn't know that. The butterfly didn't gather strength in his wings because he had such an easy passage to get out. There was no endurance. So his beautiful wings became withered and his body retained all the water because coming out of the cocoon, he uses his energy and it, the body gets small and the wings get bigger and beautiful and where he can fly. But he thought he was doing um, him good when he was helping him out. So it is when we walk and we have to go through different passages and it's for our goods, for our growth. And I was just, um, as I said, it's just a season of in this classroom. And I give thanks for the lessons, um, the, the word that was, that brought forth um, on Sunday. And these are some of the things that, you know, help us to, I mean, to walk through. So thank you everyone. Thank you, Pastor Rod, um, for allowing the Holy Spirit to use you the way he has been. And it is such, such a tremendous, such a blessing. And we give God thanks for you. Well, That's my praise report. You got me praise. You know, um, oh God, I'm, I'm so wound up tonight. Um, let me be quiet. Anybody else want to share before I, I begin speaking? Anybody, yes. Anyone else? I will say something because before Brother Mel responded, I was thinking, every time you ask that question, I'm thinking of something, some big, great testimony. And there's not always a big, great testimony, but the, the fact that we wake up in the morning and put both feet on the ground and we feel good and we're healthy, that is really the biggest because without that, you can't do anything else. So I'm going to make it my point of duty to every time you ask for a praise, praise report 
That is what I'm going to say. Thank the Lord for waking me up this morning. Amen. Taking me through a day that could have been difficult. But yes. because of him, it was not at all. Because yes. I'm constantly reminding, being reminded of who I, who's I am. Yes. Who I am. Amen. So, thank you. I, thank I, you for asking that question. Keep asking it. Okay, good. And, and you know, and you know, guys, um, some of you may, may, I think most of you would know this, but uh, whoever doesn't know, just let's just hear this. My, you know, we, we have, you know, we get up, we go to work, we, we walk, we, sometimes we're stuck in traffic and we get frustrated. But, you know, I have uh, someone very close to me, my sister, um, who, uh, Sister Carleen, by the way, Carleen Sears. And she went to the, to, to the University of Houston with my sister. They, they, they lived in the same dorm. That's how I knew, no, no, and Carleen Sears. They were in the same dorm. And, and Carleen lives in, in Georgia now. But uh, my sister, Cheryl, um, a little over 10 years ago, she was on a flight going to Canada. <laughs> She's always on an airplane, go to Europe, go to Dubai, go to Africa, go, you know, all over. Anyway, so she was on a plane going to Canada and she was uh, putting her luggage in the overhead compartment and she realized that it was a bit difficult to put her luggage in the overhead compartment so someone had, had to help her. That was the beginning for her of knowing that something just was not right. And it's a long story that goes back a decade. But that journey for my sister has just been unspeakable. She, it, took them, it took the medical professionals over a year to, di to diagnose what was going on with her. She, um, they, they, they say, what it, it is not, it is not this, it is not that. They keep ruling out things, but they could never, they could never rule to say what it actually is. It's not. Um, ALS, it is not, you know, all of these different things. Long story short, she has a, a neurological condition that became manifest in her adulthood. Typically, that condition is manifest in childhood, and many of the children do not become adults. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a condition called nemaline myopathy. And my sister, weak, that, that, that must, what it does, it weakens the muscles. And so for the better part of the past decade, actually for over a decade, my sister um, cannot walk. She cannot stand. She cannot raise her hand. Um, she had a tracheotomy. She has a tube in her throat to help her to breathe. Um, our mom passed away in June of 2015. And in that August, I remember I was at work in, in Boca, Boca Raton, and my mom, excuse me, my aunt, my sister was in the hospital at that point, and my aunt called me from the hospital crying, saying, you need to come to the hospital right away. And I got in my car, and she was in the hospital in, in Weston. And it, oh my gosh, I, I was driving like a maniac to go there, not knowing what I would see when I get there. And on the way there, her, her husband called me saying, pray for Cheryl, pray for Cheryl, pray for Cheryl. And when I got to the hospital, um, I learned that she had a, a cardiac arrest and she was on life support. And that was what was going on. She was on life support for about two or three days. And, you know, it's a long journey. They had to have a tracheotomy then and a whole series of things. She's had medical issues, you know, a blood clot in the lungs. She's had all type of things. And this is the person who was the, the picture of perfect health all the days of her life until that messenger of Satan came into her life. Um, again, this would have been a little over 10 years ago. And so now we, we have the faculties off our limbs and everything. My sister, it's a challenge. I mean, she, she, has a, she lives in a nice two-story home. 
she's never, she, even though she would travel to Dubai and all over the world, she has not been upstairs in her own house in Pembroke Pines in, in over a decade. You know, it's a challenging story. But through it all, God has been faithful because anybody who would have told me that that should be alive today, I was just like, how, how, how is that possible? You know, and I'm not saying this to make anybody sad. I'm not. It's my sister, you know, our mother and father are the same. You know, we we grew up in, I mean, it's my sister. Um, and I, I love her, but I also know that God has his purpose and his plan. And it, it's, a, it's a challenge for me at times to even consider all that. I mean, she, just in the midst of her life, she everything was going great. Just got her PhD, her two young girls are doing great. In the midst of her life, then came that, you know? And so to be able to get up each day, get out of bed, walk, talk, do whatever else, I mean, eat, Eat. I mean, she can eat now, but for about six months, she had to be fed through a tube. You know, she can talk now, but for about six months or so, she could not talk at all. She could just write on paper and you had to read what she wrote, or she could do whatever and you learn to read her lips. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's, a, that's, that's that situation. But God is good and He's faithful. I was young. Now I'm old, as I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor children begging bread. Many a person who has prayed for my sister's healing, many a person, including my own mother, has gone on to glory while my sister remains. Many a person has prayed for her brother Paul Cipollone at our former church, you know, and so many others. Um, so you can't, you know, my, 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 my sister might, might, might be, could be at my funeral. You know, at whatever point the Lord calls me home, you know, whatever. I hope it's 50 years from now, you know, so it's not a given. People have their challenges. But the, through it all, what is consistent is the love and the favor of God. And let us not take any moment for granted. People of God, um, I just know that God is doing something uh, phenomenal um, in our midst. And, you know, do, before we go any further, because I have, uh, we have a lot to share today. Before we go any further. Does anyone really, 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 really see what God is doing? Get a glimpse into what God is doing? It, I mean, when you get your college degree, your college degree gives you a certain, um, you get promoted to a certain degree, right? So certain doors will open because you don't have a college degree. We haven't arrived, but, we, but God has promoted us. And he's promoting us. And I, I am just beyond overjoyed, beyond overjoyed at what he's doing, right? And so tonight, it, it's a time to give him thanks. We're wrapping up the series and large the place of your tent. And before I go any further, I'm going to put, <laughs> not, not Roderick, but the spirit of God is going to put a challenge out to us, okay? Thank God for the role I get to play in the church. Thank God for the role that Brother Mel plays, Sister Jennifer plays, Sister Precious, Sister Dim, and so on. But God has called us to particular tasks, right? You individually are a gift of God to the world. You are a gift of God to his church. And so a challenge to you is to prayerfully consider how may God use you as we are taking this journey together. Perhaps he has gifted you to teach. And you don't see yourself as quote unquote a teacher, but forget that for a moment. It is not you, it is not your word. I am a very shy, reserved person. I've always, I've been that shy, reserved person, but yet I have been called to this particular task and I, shot, I pushed back away from it. But God said, that is what I've called you for, that's what I've not you for. And so being reluctant for a while, I said, okay, okay, I'll do it. And now he opens doors and it's not for Roderick to speak, it's for God to speak. And Roderick is just present while God speaks. And so the challenge to us, each of us, is to prayerfully consider how may I be used by God 
I don't care what you've done or haven't done before. I pray to God that in this church, as the Lord works with us and, and um, leads and guides us, that no individual will see themselves as useless, can't be used by God. Okay, so maybe your gift is not to teach. Maybe your gift is to serve behind the scenes, whatever that might look like. Well, maybe your gift is to preach and you have that, that gift. And I pray that God would just give us the, the insight, the discernment to know that we can trust God to raise up people among us. So it doesn't matter if you're not on quote unquote leadership. If you're gifted to teach and the spirit of God is in you, then I believe God would have a platform to be presented whereby he works through you. So it's not, don't make a decision because Roger put something out there, because not Roger, just prayerfully consider, go to God and may he reveal himself to you. To you. And, you know, it's, it's, you know, I just, I just, I know at times in churches, people are very territorial with their ministry and their gift and, you know, nobody come there and so on, so on. It is my pulp, it is my, 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 no because God will wipe out whoever is in his way and put who he wants there in a given moment. And so in the, the point through this is prayerfully consider how God may use you. Sister Beverly has a gift to write, and I just love the writing that she shares with us in this environment. Um, we have different ways in which God uses us, okay? So I just wanted, wanted, wanted to share that. Um, the series and larger place of... Actually, hold on. Anybody want to say anything before we, we, we get into the, tonight's lesson? I just beg to second what you just said. <clears throat> Can you elaborate? No, because this is God Church, and we're not looking for the best of the best. You know, remember, God is the one who chose us and raised up. So if you have any, doesn't matter. Whatever you got, use whatever you have. You know, I've said it many, many times to help build God's kingdom. This is not about us. This is about God. And whatever you have, it doesn't matter. Use it. So if you if you are feeling that God is nudging you right now, let's give Brother Radical call that sister didn't you? I can't take me. Yeah. And we could talk about it. Yeah. We got we got a, there's, there's space for everybody. That's you know, you don't want to see me every Sunday collecting presiding over the the, the soil. Our sister Jennifer, if you want to, it doesn't matter. Just use what you use what you got. Yeah. Yeah. Remember, God, you know, if you don't read the scripture, you look who God used. He used the shepherd to deliver the message that the king was born, didn't go to Herod. Mm -hmm. He used David, making the greatest king in Israel. You know, a shepherd boy, you know, man was tending the sheep. You know, so don't don't look at the God of ourselves as well. We can't know. Just look at yourself that if you you want to do it, then God will help you. Amen. Yeah, because when when He created us, He said He give us dominion over the world. So we got it. So just use it. Amen. Uh, and I thank you, brother. Now. Um, don't you don't have to turn to it now, but just make a note Romans chapter 12, verses 1 through 8. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 through 8. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. And um, later on, going through to verse 8, it's saying that we have different gifts according to the grace God has given to us. And he says, if your gift is 
fill in the blank, then boom. If your gift is, then, right? So whatever your gift is, you have a responsibility to give that gift to, 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 um, to present that gift. You present your body a living sacrifice, holding ourselves up to God, and let God take that gift and put that gift to work for his kingdom. And Amen. he is glorified through it. He is glorified all about him and his agenda. Okay. Uh, Thank you all. Um, let me let me let me say something because you you said don't turn to it, but I have to turn to it because there's one part in there that everybody could do. If it is serving, sure. it is serving. It's, it's a broad yes. I'll go. If, if it is serving, then serve. And I know everyone can serve. That's Amen. my God. I don't know, I don't know why I say that, but that's my God. I have to look for the word. <laughs> Amen. Amen. If it's serving, then serve. All right. Okay. So people got yeah, so here we go. Tonight we're we're concluding the series entitled Enlarge the Place of Your Tent. This series has been, I've had the privilege of teaching the word of wow, the word of I've been, I mean, in 19, excuse me, in 19, in 2013 is when I started teaching a class called the Believer's Authority. Yeah. And from the Believer's Authority, it became changing your world with, with the word. I've had the privilege over many years teaching the word on a Sunday, on a given Sunday. Now I get to preach the word on a given Sunday. But I can say this to us. God has done many a great thing through our ministry. First, the teaching at our former church and now this. I believe that this series is, there's a certain anointing on this particular series that I can't effectively articulate. And larger place of your tent. I mean, the beauty of God is that God has allowed us to hear this series preached and is to hear this series taught. The gift to teach is a gift from God. The gift to preach is a gift from God. Not every teacher is a preacher. Not every preacher is a teacher. God bless those who have both gifts. I happen to be one of those, but the gift from God to, it, I mean, it's to us as a ministry is on Sunday, we get the enlarged place of your tent in a preaching setting. And then we come to his table together in an interactive um, manner on a Tuesday to break bread together as we learn of this um, enlarged place of your tent. And so, you know, I'm gonna say, say this to us as we're, as we're now um, um, wrapping up the series. It is essential that each of us contemplate what has God been saying to us. If you happen to miss any of the Sunday services or any of the Tuesday um, um, Bible studies, Please, and as I've probably heard me say before, please don't do it for me. Please don't. I don't need the favor. Don't do me a, a favor. Please. I don't need a, a, any favor. Please do it for you and for God. Go back and listen. Go back and listen. I was telling somebody last night that it's in the going back and listening to words that God happened to have delivered through these, these lips that I get certain insight and certain things are unlocked from my own life, from my own spirit. Go back and, and yes, you, you're in the service, but if you have, you know, I know you, 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 some of you may not always be able to, to make it to other summit, but I challenge you to go and listen and hearken unto the voice of God. It's a, it is a gift to us. God is revolutionized our lives. And so without further ado, I think that the, this, this thing on Sunday, on Sunday, we talked about the life cycle of a butterfly. Have, has anyone among us ever um, heard 
the believer's journey likened to the life cycle of a butterfly before? Anyone? Anyone? Okay. I, I know that God is, sir, pardon me. I know that God is, um, God is at work. What he did on Sunday. I mean, and that three, like I mentioned on Sunday, three times last week, he gave that to me. And every time I forgot about it, but I haven't just spoken it into my, my, my device, right? The life cycle of a butterfly. Us as believers, us as believers, the, our, the, our life journey is like that of a butterfly. Like that of a butterfly. And so the butterfly has four stages. If you missed this service on Sunday, please, please go back and listen. We're going to talk about some things tonight, but please go back and listen, to, okay? As for your own self. And matter of fact, go back and listen and then come back and testify if you would, because God is doing something. There are four different stages, four different stages. And, I, and part of this, I had to rush through on Sunday. I was just talking a mile a minute because I couldn't, I didn't have all the time to, to share. Four different stages in the life cycle of a butterfly. And it can be likened to us as believers. God has made for us to get to the butterfly stage. There's the egg stage, the larva stage, the pupa stage, and the butterf and adult butterfly stage, right? The egg is when a butterfly, when the egg is laid typically on the bottom of a leaf, and that is there for a couple of weeks. And after that comes the larva stage. The larva is the caterpillar. The caterpillar, when you say a caterpillar, that is the butterfly in the larva stage. The butterfly, um, excuse me, the caterpillar has a duty to eat and eat and eat. And once you get to a certain level, then it graduates to the pupa stage. It, it weaves into a cocoon. And in the cocoon, what, happening, what happens is that this butterfly, excuse me, is that the caterpillar, the larva caterpillar, is now um, in a cocoon and it is undergoing a metamorphosis. And it's the metamorphosis, through the metamorphosis, it goes through that process. And when all is said and done, it sheds what is around it and it becomes an adult butterfly. And only God and the spirit of God. I've never, never, ever, ever heard anybody teach on that. And I'm sure others have, but I've never heard it. But God insisted three different times last week to me up until Saturday morning that that was the message to conclude this series and the place of your tent. And so with that as the backdrop, let us proceed and tonight, it's not intended to be a teaching. If you want to hear the teaching, go to the service on Sunday and listen to what the Spirit of God says to us. Tonight, tonight is meant to be somewhat interact, to be interactive. And I don't want to be overly deep. So let us not be so overly deep that we can't talk about basic things, okay? So we're going to talk about the four phases tonight and just trust that God will, will speak to our collective hearts. And this does not come from a man, it comes from God. So let us now proceed and listen to what God has to say. So, you, what, and this is again from, from Sunday, you are born to fly, now fly. The egg stage, each of us, as we said on Sunday, each of us as we're born, when we're born of the flesh, we're in the egg stage, right? The egg stage, because, of but, because an egg is laid, that does not mean that that egg has to become a butterfly. The egg is laid and then the, what happens when the egg develops to a certain point, then it, it hatches. You see, then, then it, 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 um, it hatches and then it becomes um, a caterpillar. The egg stage is for the person who is just born of the flesh. 
Nicodemus, I won't read through the whole thing, but Nicodemus came to Jesus by night and Jesus essentially told him that um, you can't enter, I mean, Nicodemus said, sure you can't enter into your mother's womb a, sec a second time. And Jesus says that uh, in verse five, very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of, of God unless they're born of water and the spirit. Spirit, uh, bless, uh, flesh gives birth to flesh and spirit gives birth to spirit. So we must be born again. So being physically born is one thing, being born again is another thing altogether. So we're gonna try to get through this and, uh, <clears throat> and we're gonna become interactive and I hope that each of us um, is engaged tonight. Would you tell us, anyone who cares to tell us your salvation story about when, about your second birth? Salvation story? Anyone care to share your salvation story? Um, the old saints used to say, things I used to do, I do no more. Place I used to go, I go there no more. Yeah? What's your salvation story? How did God call you out of darkness into his marvelous light? Would you share that with us? Anyone? I started taking Warren to church because I thought I should bring him up in church. And um, every Sunday I'd go to church and I would cry and I would cry. An altar call would come and I didn't go up. And finally I went up. And it was just the right thing to do. But what is funny is even before my, my mom died, I wanted her to be saved and I wasn't saved yet. So what is that with me wanting people to save and I'm not saved because I thought of mommy and she got saved. Thank God that the caregiver she had brought her to the Lord. And then she used to send me to church. She never went. And then I had Warren and said, okay, it's time for Warren to be brought up in church. And I took him and, but God had a plan and I'm so happy that he has called me to be a part of his family. Couldn't have been better. Praise Thank God. the Lord, and that's my salvation story. Praise God. Yeah. Praise God. Any other saints among us? You want to tell us your <laughs> salvation story? <laughs> Anyone here ever been to a nightclub? <laughs> yeah, <cool. laughs> Stone Love, Silver Hawk. <laughs> Black Star. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> and, uh, well, yeah, I, I, um, I don't I know think. about Stone Love or anything like that. I've only heard about them. Okay. Um, <laughs> I, I, I have been to Caravana in Houston and. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yes, <laughs> Caravana. Caravana, yep. But um, oh. mine was in, in high school, actually. So um, I was, well, I didn't full, I didn't go, well, okay, let me start. Um, so my salvation came when I was at St. Hughes and we, I used to attend these meetings with the student Christian movement. I would attend them and, you know, the music would be nice. Maranatha singers were there one day and my friend Deanne was sitting next to me and they were singing and they had the altar call and I said no I go because I I don't I don't need to I, I go to church already I don't need to be saved or and so finally Deanne with tears in her eyes turned to me bubbles they used to call me bubbles bubble they still do bubbles the Lord is calling you um why don't you go and I said okay I'll go so um that is when I gave my life to Christ now that doesn't necessarily mean that I didn't backslide because at U of H I certainly did some major black backsliding all the way to the foot of the mountain again and probably <laughs> circle it about 10 times <laughs> during that time <laughs> and, yeah have the scars to show but you know that experience though has 
made me a better child of God because it's only by God's grace and mercy that he brought me back, you know, from that place. So um, that's my story. Amen. Um, you, you may not remember, but I, I, I was at so, some of those sessions at university, you know, University of Houston with you, with you guys. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I, I, I was in high school and my sister was in college. I used to, to bro, broke out a, a par, party with, with you guys sometimes. Yeah, I remember. And then going away three hours away to Austin, where, where mom and daddy ain't, ain't, ain't around. That's a right. whole, di whole different party lifestyle at that point. Party Central was my dorm room, man. <laughs> Thursday, Friday, Saturday night. You know? Oh, okay. You see, I, I've, well, I might, we might appear holy and righteous, but some of us, if, if the skeletons in our closet could talk, you know? If they could talk, where, where, where would we, what would we look like, you know? But thank <laughs> God. Thank God for grace. You know, someone said, thank God for Jesus. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> thank God for grace. Yeah, well, yeah. We have a whole graveyard that can be named after me, probably. Huh? We have a whole graveyard that can be named after me. <laughs> oh, <laughs> the, oh, yeah. The, the only thing I would say, thank God to save a wretch like me. <laughs> yeah. Amen. 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 That's the only thing I'm going to say. Thank God to save a wretch like me because I was a wretch. And I mean, no, no big wretch. Big wretch. Yes, I say, is it I? Is it I? Won't tell my story. I need a book, but praise God, you save a wretch like me. Yeah. All right. So, so the, the, um, uh, the, are you, well, you know, well, tonight is not meant to be a teaching, but I think in order to have it as, as engaging as possible, what I want to do, if you can give me about less than 10 minutes, I just want to go through the life cycle, and then I'll, I will, um, I will, we'll have a, a more spirited discussion, okay? Life cycle. The first is the egg stage, okay, then you're, then you're, you're born again, you come uh, in, in, into the body of God, body, yeah, body of, of Christ, okay. The next stage is the larva stage, as I mentioned, um, as you saw in the diagram, larva stage. In the larva stage, the caterpillar has one, well, the, the larva stage, what it, was the egg is now the caterpillar. It has, a caterpillar has one agenda, to eat, to eat, to eat, everything inside. If you go out into your garden, you plant tomatoes or, or whatever other crops, and you see some cat, you see stuff eaten, and you see a caterpillar and you want to get mad at the caterpillar, it was just doing what it was created to do. It eat, it eat, it eat. The caterpillar in its life, excuse me, from the egg to the full grown caterpillar, um, its, its body size increases uh, by a, approximately a thousand times, right? A thousand times. It's eat, it has one agenda, eat, 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 eat. And for us, when we become believers, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. In order to grow and develop, right? So we're no longer the egg. We're no longer unsaved. Now we are new converts. But the new convert has to eat and eat and eat and eat and grow, right? And the, you know, the psalmist, oh, I love your law. I meditate on it all, all day long. You're, uh, and... and uh, I have more insight than my, all my teachers for our meditate on your statutes. And essentially what he's saying through all of this is that he has developed a passion for God and his word. I have not departed from your laws for you yourself have taught me. You yourself have taught me as I get into your word. How sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. The, the caterpillar in order for a caterpillar to grow and develop, it must eat and eat and eat and eat. And as it is eating, it is developing, it is growing, and it is onward towards where it needs to be. And what we said on Sunday is that far too many believers, however, they never go beyond 
the larva stage. They never be, go beyond a caterpillar. So they know the word, they can quote the word, they can tell you Ephesians 3 verse 20 in a moment. They can tell you John 3 verse 16 in a moment. They can tell you, um, you know, they can quote the entire Psalm 100 in a moment. And all of these different things in the Bible. But much of it is simply a knowledge of the word of God. It has not truly transformed the life to the point where they living victoriously in this world day by day by day. The challenge to us as believers is not to be so fat on the word that we have no relevance, no, we can apply that word to our everyday life. The purpose for which our church exists is to not simply teach you the word, but is to help give you some practical day-to-day -day solutions to the, to the journey of, of your life. Starting next week, next, next week, next month, every first Thursday, and you'll hear more about this as time goes on. Every first Thursday, we're gonna have a seminar, a seminar. We will make reference to the Bible, but it's not a Bible. It's not a discipleship class. It's not a, um, anything else. As a matter of fact, you could, come, you could be a non-believer and come to it and get so much out of it because it's, not a, it's something that God will use to bring people into the kingdom, but it is day-to-day -day practical things that we need, right? And, and so what I'm saying through this is that we are being equipped, um, by the way, because we want to be, we want, we, we don't want to, to well, not we don't. God does not want us to be so full on the word that all we know is the word. We want to know the word, but the word should transform our lives and cause us to develop, develop. The larva stage was not the end of the caterpillar. As, let, me, let me back up. The larva stage is not the end of the life cycle. You're not meant to simply be a caterpillar eating, eating leaves all the days of your life. You're meant to grow and develop further. Um, you know, actually, I'm going to give me a second for a moment. I'm going to, uh, one second. I want to talk, speak about these, these, uh, these couple of things. After this stage, I want to talk about the, the, the different stages and, and then we're going to come back. So we're going to come back and, and address these, these different, uh, different points, right? The, the, the next stage is the pupa stage the pupa so having eaten all that the, that the caterpillar has eaten it develops and gets to a point where it's it it's it goes to the pupa stage the pupa or the chrysalis stage in the pupa stage what occurs uh, give me a second here uh, sorry in the okay here we go in the pupa stage, what happens is that the caterpillar, having gotten to a certain point now, now it's literally being transformed. It's undergoing a metamorphosis and its body is changing. So it's no longer walking around and, and chewing leaves. Now it, is, it goes into a cocoon and it's being transformed by a process called metamorphosis. But um, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. Sister Jennifer, would you read this for us, please? 2 Corinthians 3, verse 18. 2 Corinthians 3, verse 18. But we all, with unveiled face, beholding as it is in a mirror, the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. Amen. So we are being transformed, transformed. The whole goal is to become a butterfly, butterfly. And so if you develop further, further, if you develop as you ought to develop, then a natural byproduct, if you allow God to work in you and through you, is that we are being transformed. And if you look at this, it's like we're holding as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord. So the glory of the Lord over time 
you, you begin to look more and more like Jesus. Yeah? You begin to look more and more like him. Your conduct is more and more as his is. The things that you that you once did become detestable to you because you're being transformed. Not that you've never ever sinned, but we're being transformed um, uh, into, into that ultimate image. And then the last one, after going through all of this, the adult stage, there is where you were meant to be, the adult stage. The, the caterpillar, it literally walks around chewing on leaves. I remember as children, um, we used to, even though I was scared of caterpillars, what, what we used to do sometimes, I mean, bad, bad boys that we were, we would, we would see a caterpillar on a, on a leaf and we would like wake up an ant's nest and drop the caterpillar in the ant's nest and just see the caterpillar doing this thing while the ants are chewing the caterpillar alive, right? You cannot wake up an ant's nest and put a butterfly in there and expect that the butterfly is just going to stay on there struggling. No, it just up and flies away. The butterfly was was meant was meant to to um. I mean, the, the it was meant to be a butterfly from the very from it was an egg from the egg first went on that leaf. It was meant to go all the way through adult stage. Um. Um. Actually, I'm going to skip this verse. Second Corinthians chapter. Four. 5 verse 17. And this is the last thing I'm going to say, and then we're going to make it interactive. I just wanted to make sure we get through it, get through this. Sister Precious, can you read this for us, please? Second Corinthians 5, verse 17. Second Corinthians 5 and verse 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Amen. So you have now become that adult butterfly. That adult butterfly, that is what you are meant to be all along. And so the, the challenge to us is this, that we do not get stuck in any stage, but no, God wants for us to be that adult butterfly. And so here is the question for us now. And for the rest of the time together, I asked for 10 minutes. You gave me 10 minutes. Thank you. Where's our time together? I hope to make it very interactive. What stage in the butterfly's life cycle are you at right now? At what stage in the butterfly life cycle are you right now? Ooh. Ooh. I believe everyone on here is a believer. Therefore, you are not in the egg stage. What stage are you at right now? Honest self-assessment. At what stage in the press are you? And, and let me just put the image up on the screen again, just so we see it. We see it, right? Because we all saw it just now. I can feel like I'm back in science class, in, in, in Miss Johnson's science class all over again. Yeah? At what stage? Egg, larva, pupa, butterfly. Adult butterfly, where are you in this process? And please, whatever you do, don't all talk at the same time, please. I'm an adult butterfly. Amen. Oh, no, they are an adult and you can reproduce. That's me. I'm the adult. Don't Amen. ask me why. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. That's where they, that's I believe that's where we should all be at this stage in our life. And um, I'm at the adult, still a work in progress, but we are producing and we're bearing fruit. We're no longer drinking milk. So I think we should be at the adult stage at this time. And I think I'm there um, again, progressing. And as um, you know, we all sin and come short of the glory of God. But we are at this stage where we know that you don't practice things and you know how to press on. Press along daily and die to yourself daily and just walk daily with Christ. That's it. Amen. 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 Thank you, Sister Murphy, <laughs> Sister Sonia. 
Don't don't wallow in anger. I had a, I had a, an a, a experience this weekend. I was so upset and went to bed with a heavy heart. Mm. But you know what? I got up Monday morning and I got on my knees and I, I asked the Lord to take it away from me. And it's amazing what He's doing. I mean, beautiful thoughts are coming. Mm -hmm. But you know what? What happens when that thing that you thought God had healed you off and it you really feel deep down it's been healed and then the person come and reopen the wound. Yeah. What, what happens at that stage? Yeah. Go back again to God and ask him to heal it again. What? I don't know. I'll see what happens because Monday morning was a great feeling and I haven't seen the person again. And maybe when I do see that person again, it's going to happen. I hope not. Then I'll tell you what, what I did and how I felt. Oh my gosh. Mm. Mm. Die daily. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Dear Listen. sister, we can on, we, we are only responsible for ourselves. Where you can you can only change you, you can only do the things to, to, to work to get your life together. You cannot change others. So you just have to the, pray for them and just try to live your life. And here, and here is Donnie pointing at me. That's exactly what I said to you. <laughs> And yes, true. Can't but this has been my philosophy. Philosophy. If you don't point out to the person, I don't know if I do it to change them, but I just want them to see what you're doing. And that has been my mo for a long time. Is that a curse or a gift? <laughs> and that is it. Doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes you you just have to let that be. Just have to leave them. You live your life, try to do the right thing. And especially if you tell somebody something over and over, don't continue to beat that in their head because you cannot change them. You but have to I just- Can I tell them one time? Can I tell you, them? If you tell them one time, if that's what you, you let in your spirit to do that, then you do it. Yeah. And then don't continue to beat them down with whatever, that same thing over and over. Right. You just lay, lay the, um, the ground and that, that's it. Pray for yeah. them. You try to live right. Make sure you're not dropping any sneers, anything in their path so they, shall, they will stumble. So right. you have to just do yeah. your part and just let them be. Yeah. In your anger, do not sin. Yeah. In your anger, do not sin. It's, it's easy. You know, I was talking to somebody this evening and I told them that, that um, if somebody else is wrong, Somebody else is wrong in a particular situation, no matter how wrong they are, it does not give you license to do the wrong in showing them the right. Because no, they could do 99 things wrong and you do one thing wrong, but your one wrong gets highlighted and they try to equate your one with their 99. So just do what best you can to be be um, blameless like 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 job be blameless so people can look beyond their feelings and say okay i can i can i hear what you're i, I can receive what you're saying because you're coming from a place of love and you know uh, jesus with all that uh, jesus had um and and that and what god himself uh, god the father uh, with all of that there was, he, he, there's always this spirit of reconciliation. There's never to condemn, never to condemn anyone. There's always a spirit of reconciliation and spirit to try to promote love and healing. Yeah. So there's that. Um, I want to, in the larva stage, we talked about eat, 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 right? Um, you want a agenda to eat. So with that said, how much time in a typical day should a Christian feed on the word? How much time in a typical day should a Christian feed on the word? How much time? I think it's individual. I don't believe there is a right and a wrong way or a right and a, right and a wrong time. I think it's individual. Right, as often as you're led, if your spirit tell you you, you know, sometimes you get up 
and your spirit tell you to pray or to do whatever you do it all through the day, whatever, whenever you're led. So there's not no specific, as Sister Jennifer said, time. Your spirit, you know, you, you are led to do certain times, you know, but I don't think there's a number of time, like three times, four times, whatever. Sometimes it could only be one, and that one is very mindful, and that one you 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 have reached and height with just that one certain um, maybe a worship that you did a particular time in that day. It was so strong that it almost can cover the entire day. So there is not no particular. I don't think it's like you know a time um, a number of times. Yeah, I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. The goal in this in this is not to be is not to be legalistic, right? To say you must spend twenty minutes per day, right? Um, it could be that it's twenty minutes per day, but it could be, you know, four hours for the next person, and, and it also depends on the season of life in which you are, right? I like to think that I could spend time with Lord, spend time with the Word, but I, I would like to think that for the twenty-four hours, whether I'm reading, praying, working, driving, whatever else, I would like to think that I am walking in the spirit, right? And if we stay in the word, then we can walk in the spirit and the spirit, the word of God is, is, is in us. And just having that, that passion. So with, with that, and, and I know others may probably want to, to, to share, but before, as you do, or before you do, let me add this to it. Do you read the Bible more now or when you just got saved? Now or when you just got saved? Tell me. I would say no. No. More no. <laughs> I'd say no. Interesting. Anybody else read it more when they got, just got saved? And, and, and by the way, it's not a trick question. It's nothing good, bad, or indifferent. It's just we're just having a conversation among ourselves. I think so, maybe when you're just hey, saying, hey, sister Jennifer, um, speak, speak, speak for at least thirty seconds. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get a, a prop. Okay, speak for at least thirty seconds. I will disappear for a moment. Keep talking. You let me forget. Uh, <laughs> and I was saying that when you are just saved, I believe that people are very zealous about reading, reading the Bible, and you're reading. But I don't know that you're necessarily reading for the understanding that you get when you are more mature. So I think that as you're mature, you read the Bible more. You're not just reading it to say that you read the Bible because you're, you're a newly found Christian, but you're reading the Bible because you want to get into the word and you really want it to marinate in you, is what I think. Yes, yes, as babe designed sincere milk of its mother, right? And now that we have uh, passed the milk stage, we want to eat on the, you know, the meat of the bone. So, uh, yeah, we are. Okay. Hey, everybody, I'm back. How cool is that? Um, <laughs> I just, I just, I just went went in, into into my room and got um. This is this is my saved Bible. Yeah, it's my saved Bible. I got this Bible July 17th, 1988, given to me by Good Shepherd Presbyterian Church. Um this Bible, if I want you to show you something, right? Here's the little Bible. If you look here, back here, right? What you see is starting with the epistles of Saint Paul. What you see is a bunch of loose, torn out pages. Right? But you've been very careless with your book. When you're in, if you were in school, you would get a spanking for that for not taking care of your book. <laughs> well, well, listen, I'm I'm saying this to you. I read the Word of God now. I love the Word of God now. But I remember when I had this Bible back then, and I was, and something was unlocked in my life and in my mind. The epistles of St. Paul, they were alive in me. And I would, my brother-in-law would say, you true Bible leaf, right? I would be in the Bible. I'll be intense into it, especially the epistles of St. Paul. I would say that 
I don't, for that period of my life, I think there's no period of my life that where I read the Bible more than I did during that period, right? It, it was a different, it was a different reading now. Then I was onto something. I'm just like, wow, I'm being transformed and God is unlocking some things within me. I read with, from a different perspective right now, but this, and especially when in, in a, and sister, <laughs> sorry, no way, I'll go to say stuff. Okay, I will call the wise day. In July of 1995, a few months after I was called and the Lord told me to move out of mommy's and daddy's house, and because he needs my full attention, because he's calling me to himself, July of 1995, I lived in the, an apartment right off of Richmond in, on, in, on, near downtown Houston. And it was just me, and I just got laid off of my job. So, and I told, I, the Lord told me, I, he, he, I'm moving to Florida. He's moving me to Florida. And so guess what? The company that laid me off, they told me that they'll pay me indefinitely until I get another job. So, so I, my whole thing was, I'm not living in Houston. So I'm applying for jobs in Florida. So while I'm waiting on people in Florida to contact me about jobs, I'm in the apartment reading my Bible. And it was like a transformative experience. And there's this passion that I developed for God and his word during that time. That is when, always, always in the, in the book, that's why the Bible mash up like it mash up now. Um, I read it, I mean, like, like it was, it was just, it was intense. It was crazy in, in, intense, you know? And that's, the, the point of all this is just to say, as the Lord is in, is in you, just get into his word, you know? For me, it was more of, you know, like when you just start dating your, it's like, it's, it's, it's those, those two lovebirds. I noticed me and Denley sit, sit, we're in, on different floors in our house. She's upstairs, I'm, I'm downstairs. But these two lovebirds can't get enough of each other. <laughs> so was... We don't have any floors. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> anyway, um, the the point is when you just start dating, there's just this, oh my gosh. Oh, oh you know, that you see that Jennifer, that Jennifer Burrell, trust me, we can't, we can't wait to see her again. We can't wait to see her again. Yeah. And I said, Oh, that Melbourne. Oh, I mean, that tall, dark, and handsome man. Oh, I can't get enough. Right? <laughs> but, <laughs> but now you're married, you're happily married, you know, all these years later. It's a different kind of love. You have a m m more, your love has grown, right? It's still intense, but it's a different degree of intensity in a similar way. That is it with the word of God. So it doesn't, and there's no right or wrong answer to that. If you read, if you read the Bible more then, then God, 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 God bless you. If you read it more now, God bless you. But whatever it is, let us be in the word and be people of the word and just ask God to, to, to um, keep us, sustain us. Amen. Amen. Right. You know, I'm just I'm just sitting here listening and, and, and shut up. And the reason why I shut up, I don't want to be controversial. Um, you know, I could go back from caterpillar, butterfly, and say that I'm half caterpillar, half butterfly. And the reason why I say that, you have to stay in the word. It it might sound off, but it's a little bit different because we're a little bit different in, in our term than and butterfly because you you have to stay study the word and when you study the word you don't study the word and keep it you study the word and you pass it down because sometimes you only get the word to pass down and about in the in a daytime if you always spend spend if you have like a definite time to to, to spend with the Lord and you know we, we have to be intentional and and oh, we 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 spend time with the lord and i say this to that when you get up in the morning the first thing you do you go to the bathroom you brush your teeth 
Mm-hmm. Uh, you'll get ready to go to work. You know, when you go to work, you look at 12 o'clock, you eat 12 o'clock. And then next thing coming around, and it's five o'clock, and then you go home. Mm-hmm. And we fixate on those three things, so like, you know, like you work for 40 years, and you've been doing the same thing over and over. Why, why don't we put God in our life at that and say, okay, as soon as I get up in the morning, I'm going to give him praise. And you go through the door, you reach work, thank you, God. And we just make it, we just make it intentionally. But know that at that point in time, we need to give him his prop. And he will acknowledge us for that. You know, it's not like, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with like, okay, you don't pray 12 o'clock, but you pray 2 o'clock, and you pray 3 o'clock. But, but we, we should set a definite, definite time to say, okay, I'm going to praise him at this time. Like when I get up in the morning, as soon as I, as soon as I get up, it's just me and God. Before I go to the door, I ask him for protection. When I reach work, God, thank you. Say, okay, no, you got the day, protect me through the day. When I sit down to have my, my lunch, you know, well, sometimes my lunch varies, but I usually do like between 12 and 2. I go to him, I give him thanks for what I eat, and then, you know, bless the food, bless it to my body and to my body to yours. And then when I finish work, I say, okay, God, guide me home. And when I reach home, I say, God, thank you. For, you know, thank you for your guidance home. And before we go to bed, I did my, do my devotion. You know, so this is just for me. I'm not saying, you know, and it's, I, I do stuff, it got to be intentional to let you know that at this time, at this time of the day, we're going to talk. You know, so this is why I, I, I was just listening and I, it's, I just, like I said, I just shut up and, and know that he's he, he, he going to want me to talk. In life, in life, whatever we do, we got to make it intentional. And I would say, if you live your, your, your spiritual life and your, 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 your regular life, you know, this world will be a better place. And you, we can change the world, but God can. But by our, 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 our decision that we will make for our life. Sometimes, you know, we go around and we pray and we pray for a better world. And, you know, sometimes we have to look in the mirror and say, we could be the person that are the, the, the people who are, who are praying for. So what I'm saying, we just have to make it intentional. Oh, we, oh, we, oh, we, oh, we speak to the Lord. And like I said, I, I, I watched this, I don't know, we got some, this, this prayer warrior. You got some prayer warrior, I'm not going to call no name, but I just like to hear the ding three o'clock in the morning. Ding! You see, these are people with the intentional, you know, say the watchman, watch the city. These are people that watches over the ministry, watches over people uh, who say that you're praying for. You can hear a track like in the morning and people, if you want to join the prayer, the prayer warriors, put your name in. You got to wake up early though, three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> you, know, you know, we got people that wake up at that time and start to speak to the Lord. You know, some of us sleep and then we we'll wake up, speak to the Lord, you know, covering us. So this, this is what we have to do. Whatever we do for the law, we have to make it intentional. If we can talk to him 12 o'clock, we can talk to him 12 o'clock. You might can't, but somebody else is talking to him 12 o'clock. Because once your body, you know, some is the hand, some is the foot, some is the head, some is the eye. This is why the word of God says, give some prophesy, give some preaching, some teaching. Wherever you are in your life, when you walk with God, you just stay there, hold it, and will direct us. So that is my answer to your all your questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brother Mel, yes, thank you so much. Um, just thinking again as a question that Pastor Rodd asked about what stage of the butterfly um we are. And um just looking at the cycle, it it goes uh, after the life cycle of the butterfly, you know, he made as I said, he was made to soar. It was May, I think it was May of two, two years ago, I went to Kentucky. And, you know, for those who know me, well, know that I love trees. And there were so many different kinds of pine trees. And I remember sitting on, I just was looking at this stuff that was on it. I didn't understand exactly what it was at the time. So I went there and I was really inspecting it only because there were so many of them and it was not a pretty um little thing it was and it was just to find out later that it was the 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 but in a cocoon stage in a cocoon but it was so ugly you know it was just looked so alien 
And that is the same thing that um, when he was go the butterfly going through that stage, that metamorphosis stage, that thing where he was in wasn't that look wasn't looking that good. It was just looking like an alien thing, and I was just looking at Mar just looking at it, and um, just it came came back so clear to me about the importance of what was developing at that stage. So some of us, yes, we're at the butterfly stage and others are in the cocoon stage or whatever stage we're in. There were purpose, there's purpose. There is purpose and I wonder too, when the butterfly is flying away, it, you see that cycle thing, if it goes back to, he lays egg and it continues. So whatever stage we are in, that God has us, there's purpose. And as Brother Mel likely um, said, it, it be intentional. Whatever stage we are at, um, we're not despising small beginning. Whatever stage we are at, and allow God to use us. And as long as we make ourselves available to him, he use us. Be it the egg, be it the caterpillar, be it the, you know, whatever stage. Just allow God to be his vessel. Be his vessel. That's my little much. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister Precious. Thank you, Brother Mel. Um, I pupa stage, we're being transformed. Chrysalis, right? Um, how has the word transformed you? Describe your metamorphosis. How long was your pupa stage? And that means how long in the as you got into the word, did you undergo that metamorphosis to be that new creation that we talk about? How has the word transformed you? Describe your metamorphosis. How long was your pupa stage? And this is unique to each person. There are no two things that would be the same because we have our own journey. Um, okay, if nobody talk, I'll, um, I'll briefly say, sometimes um, one of my college friends um, would, so, so, sometimes some of my college friends come into the service and, you know, the, the, the person who you know today, was, I mean, compared to, to those, those college days, how's the word transform me? I, I won't tell you what I had a passion for when I was in college, but it was not the Lord and his work, right? But seeing how when I, I, I mean, I, I started going to church for a particular reason. I was trying to, I know, before, I won't go into it. started going to church in college and going to church. The word started to transform me and it has just you know, taken me on my journey. My metamorphosis, it's just, it's just crazy to think. You know, have you ever, has God ever taken you in, through a journey where you, you are, you physically find yourself in a place where you used to be and the place where you used to be was the place to be, but now you just feel like a fish out of water, so out of place in that environment, you know? Seeking pleasures in overcrowded, smoke-filled rooms. Remember those days? You know, seeking pleasure in things that don't feed your spirit, man. And I mean, listen, we're all human beings. So, um, how has the word transformed you? you, you your metamorphosis. You know, come on. I'm not. I might. I might maybe I'm. Maybe I'm the only one who. Maybe I'm the only one who. Um, okay, okay, okay. Let me, let me, let me. Thank let me, you. Let me. Help me. Thank you. Thank you. Like, like, okay. You know, I sometimes, like on a Sunday, like after church, and you sit down, you know, you work six days, you decide that, you know, you want to watch a movie. And then I would go on the TV, and you got like Netflix. And I would have to go through like, geez, like 20, 30 movies. But once I, you know, they got the writing, and they would say, like, um, 
language, then I just, I don't need, I just, Open. So, you know, I probably need to call Netflix and say, look, Netflix, man. You must, you know, yeah, I'm telling you. Yes. So this, this, is, this is what the word of God did. And like, you know, you might be talking, you know, you know the, the part that get me sometimes, sometimes, because you, you know, I'm not out there like to judge anyone. And sometimes you're having some conversation and then the person might fear. I don't know if like my fears probably make some different movement. And I go, oh, sorry, I'm there. Oh, you know, because you know, you try, you try to fix your face. Because I remember <clears throat> at the farmer church, you know, this pastor preached one time, and he's like, you know, you must you know invite your neighbor over for dinner, and if a neighbor come over and I eat dinner and they swear at the table, don't fix your face. I'm going like, you know, you're you're so righteous. You go, look where you you were you were coming from there. So you know, so this is where you have to like back. So this is what the word of God, you know, is like. Put me away, you know. Keep me away from certain stuff. Like you know, you used to go to club, you know, club. I'm, I'm like the, the best dancer out there. You know, if you see me in church, <laughs> it was, yeah, you know, <laughs> this is just me. And even even to just go, you know, I this jeez, I I think that would just kill me if I go back in jail. <laughs> you, know, yeah. you know, I could just feel it and say, you know what? No, that is not for me. So that's why it worked. When you when you stay in the word, man, it tears you. Yeah. It tears you. you. You know, I remember I remember I used to love stand. You talk about Netflix. I used to love I used to love stand up comics, stand up oh. comics, right? You just like there. But no, you can't. I mean, even people who you know in regular life who you see, yes. right? I mean, I don't know, Arsenio Hall, he have a Netflix special and the words that come out of that man's mouth. Um, everybody. So I just like, I don't want to see no stand-up com comic anymore. There's no stand-up comic on Netflix that I, that I don't even it, it, tune in to watch anymore. Because yes, everybody, it, uh, it's, like, it's, like, it's like a cursing competition. How, how vulgar can you be, you know? Bob, Bob, Bob Saget, who's, you know, full house. Oh, he's a nice little dad. He's a cute little yeah. girl. But you watch Bob Saget stand up routine. And the, I'm telling you, and this is the guy who used to love to, 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 to listen to, um, I mean, back in the day, if all I need to see is, 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 a, is an album or a CD with parental advisory lyrics. Yes. And that yes. is the one for me, you know? That's, that's all it used to be, you know? Or, 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 or Yellow Man come out with a new song and you wonder how bad will he be on this? And that's just a passion. No, I cringe. I cringe when, at least I ain't no, no holier than thou, nobody, but it's just, it just, it don't agree with my spirit. It's, and that's what I used to. <laughs> Honestly, when I was growing up, you know, guys, you know, my I grew up in a house of musicians. My dad played every single instrument in the world. So you know, he got six boys, and we all musicians. You know, all of us got music at our house. And listen to me, Bob Marley, great singer. I never used to listen to Bob Marley, but now I run to Bob Marley. I'm telling you, I run to Bob Marley. And then even with movies, you know, I used to like, okay, because they language in these movies over here, I started to watch African movies. And now even African movies just started, and I'm going, okay, I'm not going to watch any movie anymore. <laughs> oh, dude, forget it. Let's, let's forget it, man. Forget it. So that is my transformation. It's... Yeah. Things I used to do, I do no more. Things I used to love to watch, I watch no more. Change See, time. that is not cliche, though. Huh? What you're saying there is not cliche. Absolutely, absolutely. Cliche. Yeah, you, just you, really just don't, you just don't have the appetite yeah. for the things. That's, that's it. You. That's yeah. exactly right, the appetite. You just, it, it doesn't sit well with you. The Holy Spirit seems like it's grieved because you, I feel uncomfortable. That's why I don't do it anymore. But how grace and how gracious God is, because when you just got saved, you would still lean mm -hmm. towards the old person. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Gradually, gradually he would just woo you. And when you get into the world, and if you just cannot, it doesn't feel right. I feel a heavy something just, no, can't do it. Yeah. Can't do it. Even if I want to do it, mm -hmm. I can't do it. Can't yeah. do it. Amen. Well, yeah. well, I love the songwriter said, every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before. So the yeah. more you take the 
in the street that I did. Amen. Amen. Yeah. 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 Not go back. No, no, no way, no way. And listen, and, and listen, we're all sinners saved by grace. Ain't no perfect one among us. We all have our challenges, but praise God that we're on a journey. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and on our journey. Brother, now what you saying? You, you have something to say. You know, some, you know, that just put something in my thoughts. So, but you just be careful that when we see someone out there doing this same thing that you used to do, not, not no different, please don't point no nose at them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Because a lot of, a lot of time we as, as chat of that, we, we tend to do that. Like, yeah. you know, just, just don't. Yeah. Just don't. Yeah. There go I, but for the grace of God. Yeah. Don't, yeah. Don't, yeah. Don't, and, you know what? I miss, I miss that. What is, don't point on what? Like you see somebody out there doing this, 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 you know, something that you know you did before, <laughs> and then you're looking at them like, you know, you see, this is why God, you know, let me tell you something. This is why we've been there, we've done that, and where we are now is to guide those people to bring them into the kingdom. Absolutely, yeah. and I, and not and not by condemnation, by yes. love. Yeah. Yes. My yes. love. So when, when you have to be in the same space with the person, you feel uncomfortable. Yeah. You know? That's why you're here. That's why I'm here. That's why God puts you there. That is why God puts you there. Yeah. You, but but I, you, you said, don't say anything. I can't say anything. <laughs> I don't, I no. have to be I'm there. Saying, no, when I said, don't say anything, don't look at the person like, your car, look what you're you doing. You know something? I say what I say, and I say it, and I say it, and I say it, and then I just don't say it anymore. But being in the space is uncomfortable, yeah. but I, I zip my mouth. I'm at the stage now where you just zip your mouth. Amen. If you share space, what are you going to do? Amen. You know? Just live your life. Live your godly life. And yep. Yeah. Like I said, just live God, your God. life. Live your godly talk to life. God in your, in your yeah. spirit, in your mind, and just talk to God. And because, yeah. as I said, you cannot change another person. No. You cannot change another person. And um, as Brother Mel was saying, it, and that is where I'm at now. I try to not to judge people, you know, to see they do some certain things and like, I wouldn't do that or whatever. You know what? I am not judging anyone. And I'm trying to be more like what Christ would do and said, what would Jesus do? That is where I'm aiming for. What would Jesus do? I don't know if that person, even though they might be doing something that we think it's ungodly or unrighteous, we don't know if they're crying out to God in their mind or are, you know, talking to God and this is just something that's on them and they're trying to have a relationship with God to try to break those habits or whatever. So therefore, don't, I get to the point where I don't judge people. I just empathize with them pray sometimes talk to God in my mind if I see them doing something that is not right and ask God to help them get to you know to break the habit or to you know things like that but rather than try not to judge them because again you don't know the struggle that they're going through and you don't know if they're not having a one-on-one -on -one with God and it's just taking them a little longer to get to where we are now so I that's what I'm saying yeah, um, there is there's a lot to be said of the sense of peace that comes with relying on a righteous, good God and one who has my best interest at heart. And so, you know, in reading the word and knowing that and coming to the realization that every single word in this book of instructions is true. There's nothing in the Bible, nothing at all that is false. So when we get in the word and allow the word to work in us and through us and we develop that relationship with the Lord, it's almost as though we constantly want to go deeper still, deeper still, deeper still. So. To me, I'm always going through a metamorphosis because, you know, the word says that it will greatest his faithfulness, his compassions and his mercies. They're new every morning. 
which means that every morning I have another opportunity to continue on this journey of transformation. And so, I mean, I'm, I'm still working remote and, you know, I'm constantly having a conversation with the Lord throughout the day. And I try as much as I can to funnel everything through him first, everything that I do. So, I mean, I still wear masks in, in public, but I'm sure the people, people would think I'm a Hannah or something because my lips are always moving. I'm either in prayer or not talking to myself, but having a conversation with the Lord behind the mask, you know, so you can't see my mouth moving. Um, when I come into situations and we are, we are encouraged to be, the, be salt and light. So when we enter a situation into a certain environment, spirit, no spirit, and others can easily tell whether or not I'm comfortable. And I don't even have to open my mouth. It's not even in my, um, even in what I say, but it's the way that I, I guess, conduct myself outside of those environments. And sometimes the enemy, when you see people speaking a certain way in your presence, sometimes it's the enemy knowing that you know, they're trying to rally you up. And in those situations, I start, I just start praying for the people, praying for the persons. You know, I remember I was in, um, um, at home, you know, a huge store, huge store. And these people could have chosen opted to go on any aisle. I was there looking at some pillows and these two young ladies came in and they just, they looked at me and they just started cursing. It was cursing, cursing. And behind my mask, I bind you up in the name of Jesus. May the peace that you're seeking, may you find it because you are children you belong to the Lord. And I just, I kept praying and binding and loosening and by, right there in the aisle and they eventually departed, they left. But I know that I knew in that moment that they were trying to rile me up. I didn't know them. And so when we walk, walk about with such understanding and knowing that the same Dunamis power that raised Jesus from the dead is what is guiding me and protecting you. And you'll walk around with a certain amount of confidence, you know. So it's transformed me every day, the word has. Amen. Thank you, Sister Carleen. Mm -hmm. And um and we're we're winding down now. So just real briefly, if we wanna. The adult stage is what we're, what we're going to, right? Adult stage. If you may have noticed on the diagram we saw earlier, it says in the adult stage, only in the adult stage can that creature reproduce. Ooh. Mm. Only in the adult stage can that creature reproduce. So when we become adults, that's when God can use us as we were intended to be used, all right? If anyone is in Christ, in new creation, all the past, all things have passed away, you know, all things have become new. And so we, I pray that you've seen this analogy, this, this thing from nature, how this relates to us as believers. It's a God thing and only God could orchestrate this. As well, such on two things, how will you, and, 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 and pr I, Pray that each person in this meeting tonight, I know some of you typically don't unmute yourself, but I would ask if some, everybody, if you look at the screen and if we can have each person or at least as many persons as possible, just to share briefly in like 30 seconds or less because we're out of time, 30 seconds or less, how this has, um, well, I can address either of these two. How will you enlarge the pace of your tent having been through this series 
And what is your biggest takeaway from the series? How will you enlarge the picture of having been in the series? And what's your biggest takeaway from the series? Okay. One, two, three, go. My biggest what? takeaway, what's your biggest takeaway from the series? That growth is constant, never remains. And that we um, thrive to whatever season we're in. We are, have to be intentional to know what God is saying to us. And that growth is constant and we go with it. That's, that's my Amen. 30 seconds or less. Thank you, Sister Precious. Okay, my biggest takeaway is that to enlarge your tent, trust God, lean on him, and he will guide you. Don't do it by yourself. You're not going to make it. Amen. Thank you, Rama. Um, How will I enlarge the place of my tent, having been through the series? Would be It would be to get closer to God, uh, strengthen my relationship with him get into the word more because uh, to, I think that's that's the my the stick my stick that needs to be strengthened is is that my my I need to get more into dig deeper in in my relationship with God Amen. Thank you, Sister Ben. All right. Uh, okay, so the, the, the usual suspects have spoken. Um, uh, who else shall share with us? What's your, how will you enlarge the place of your tent? And what's your biggest takeaway from this series? Anyone else? My biggest takeaway, real quick, less than 30 seconds. So, um, the, one of the last things you said is that the Lord can, get, what is it? That it is only when we are in the adult stage that the Lord can use us to, to that, increase. So that, that my we biggest takeaway yeah. Yeah, is just because I may be an adult, it doesn't mean that growth will stop. Something as simple as like clipping my nails. What happens when I clip my nails? They'll grow back. But I'm an adult. I'm still, you know, so yeah. that's, yeah. Amen. Amen. All right. Sister Murphy, can you share? Well, it's um, almost like what sister, the last sister just said. Um, we know that we are growing and in your adult stage, you should be reproducing. And I think we're at that level. We are getting there. So um, we, we're a work in progress and continue to grow deeper and deeper in Christ each day. Amen. Amen. Sister Jen? Yay. <laughs> I passed. You passed. Okay. <laughs> uh, for me, it's to get closer. I have strayed, really. So it's to get closer to the Lord, enlarge my tent. And the biggest takeaway is, hmm, I don't know if you think about that one. Yeah, I'll get back to you on that. Amen. All right. <laughs> um, okay, I know the, the, the rest of the others very often or usually cannot speak. So I'm just going to call you by name. I'm not sure if iPhone is, is Sister Ruby tonight. I'm not sure. But I know 383 is Sister Marcia. And then Sister Margaret, Beverly, Janice, Kerry. Is, can any of you share on this mm -hmm. these last two items before we close? I mean, we're, we're out of time, but we're pretty good there. How can you, how you enlarge a piece of, of your tent after being, have been through a series? 
And what's your biggest takeaway? Anyone else? Just know that, um, so this is Carrie. Um, growth is not something that's stagnant. It's something that continues to evolve. Um, so, you know, I feel like as Christians, as believers, we're continuously growing. We're, um, I don't feel like we can ever arrive at a certain at a certain place and then we say that we've had enough of God or, or we know everything that we need to know about God. I, I feel like it's always um, um, something where we're, we have to remain open um, in order to continuously receive from him. Um, and one of the ways that we do that, just like you talked about the caterpillar feeding constantly, one of the ways we do that is by um, feeding on his words constantly and not only just Bible readings, but also with um, events and things like Bible studies where we can learn from each other and put what we have learned into practice. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. This is scary. You know, I, I, should, I, should probably, I probably shouldn't call you, you Carrie, even though you're, you're, um, you're humble with it. She, she's a, she's uh, a Roger, brother, <laughs> Pastor Roger. I'm good. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Tim, you're Roderick, you always get in trouble. <laughs> it's all good. Uh, I'm just trying try, try to try to big you up. Okay, it's okay. No, no, I'm big You have a humble spirit. God bless you. You have a humble spirit. Amen. Bless. Amen. All right. Anyone else? Sister Anyone Margaret wants prayers in the chat. <clears throat> And 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 Sister Beverly, um, as you're sharing, you want me to, to get ready to, to do that what we talk about? Yes, yes. Okay. Go um, ahead. Go ahead. For me, the um takeaway from the series is recognizing that before enlarging the place of my tent, before I can go wider, I really have to go deeper to strengthen my stakes, because that's what's gonna hold up anything else that I'm gonna do. And then back to I can't remember if it was last week or the week before where um, we were talking about Moses having the rod in his hand where it was just basically kind of just using whatever you have in your hand. Just use whatever you have right now and maybe you'll get something else later, but just start with what you have. Amen. Uh, thank you so much. I just about be honest. Okay, um, and what else? Just about you want to go ahead with that now? Yes, yes, we can do okay. that. You want to tell the story behind it before I share it? Or? Yeah. <laughs> um, as um, Pastor Roderick is going to share, this is a writing I did like since last September, I think it was. Mm -hmm. Um. One of my coworkers, she, she's a young mom and she said she was a, she's at home a lot. So one of the things she does is she raises um, butterflies. So she was actually showing me the pictures and she was showing me the caterpillar and the cocoon and all of that. And they were really ugly. And then she showed me this picture of these two beautiful butterflies. And it just kind of brought back to mind, you know, all the different we all want to be that beautiful flying butterfly, but to get to that point, there's so many stages. So I just wrote this, just thinking of becoming the butterfly and the stages. But, but now with the explanation that Pastor Roderick is doing, as in the stages of the Christian journey, it, it just takes it all to a much deeper level. Amen. Okay, so you're gonna read it, right? I can. Okay, yes, please. So it says, on the way to becoming, there are different stages of being. Each stage has its purpose. Transformation is happening within. Do not resist the stages, see them through to the end. Purpose is fulfilling, work has been done within. The struggles and the challenges all mold us into being, and at the right time, destiny is fulfilled, 
and our inner beauty is revealed. Take comfort in knowing you are not alone. Others are also on the journey. You don't have to do life alone. And this to me summarizes what we just did tonight. <laughs> Although this was since last September. September 22nd to be exact at 9.29 a.m. Yeah. Can I see the photo? Uh, this photo, I think it's, that's it. At all. Oh, that's all of it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Very nice. Very nice. I mean, it was written for this occasion. It was written in September for this occasion. Yeah. Mm. And, and, and until she, and she wasn't even in church on this past Sunday, by the way. So until we're in this meeting tonight, that was unknown. That's, that's like a God orchestra. Just put a bow around this. Yeah. And Sister Margaret uh, in the chat says, I, I'm a butterfly. Praise God for taking me here. Slipping and sliding sometimes, but still flying and soaring. Thank you, Jesus. Through this series, I'm reminded that God has given us everything we need for life and godliness. I'm going forward with that beautiful reminder that I need to lay down fear and instances of anxiety because with him, all things are possible. Enlarging my tent with him as my father, as my guide, will bear much fruit. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. We just thank God. For, mm -hmm. uh, what he's done. Pa Pastor Rod, I ask a quick um, I have a quick request. I sent on your phone a picture of a cocoon. Yes. In a cocoon stage, if you could put that up, I just to see show just how ugly that baby looks, mm -hmm. and, and to see how you know beautiful what comes from that, and just as some of us are, we're just in that stage, but how oh, beautiful we are when you know. Okay. When the light of Christ shine through us. Okay, you said three different ones. Okay, one, Anyone, one of them. All of them, all of them have the um it was okay. those a pine tree that I saw, those cocoon. And they were looking some so so alien. They were looking like things from outer space. Okay. And to know what was inside of the, you know? Wow. That yeah. Right. You can't okay, so it can't yeah. I'm getting it I'm getting it ready to send send to me. I I, I get I send, I'm sending the I have to email it from my phone. Oh, okay. To the computer, etc. So, no, that's fine. So, um, so give me a moment, and we're, we're, we're wrapping up, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But give me one second, and I just ask. Listen, isn't God beautiful as we're doing all oh. this? Isn't God beautiful? Amen. Um, yeah. uh, oh gosh. Technology. Um. Yeah. We just give God thanks for it. And Sister Beverly, that was a that was a whole that flesh, flesh and blood did not reveal that to you. That was the Holy Spirit. You know. Yes. And we just yes. give God thanks. And it was written from before, and she was not mm -hmm. in church. On Sunday. Yeah. Oh. Mm -hmm. oh. Awesome. Bye, bye, Sister Carrie. Bye, Sister Carrie. God bless you. Bye, Sister Carrie. Mm -hmm. And thank and thank you guys for. Uh, Let's go Sister Vinel, okay? Yeah, I'm gonna. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna, yeah. I sent a text out to her that I'm so she. <laughs> <laughs> All yeah. right, hold on. Okay, I'm getting this. I'm sending my da 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 da. Okay, okay. All right. So, Bye, so Sister me... Margaret. Bye. Bye. Yes, Bye, everybody. Uh, sorry, nobody, yeah, sorry. Again, the next night. <laughs> okay, not, here we go. Not everybody. I'm, uh, still I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I said, bye, bye, <laughs> who's, who's leading? Bye, who's leading? <laughs> okay, yeah, sorry. There we go. There, that's the precious. There it is. Yes, that's one of them. Yeah, see, look at it. Aww. And and the, the butterflies that comes from, the, oh my goodness, is a monarch. Beautiful. And that thing looked like an alien. I was just looking at them to see what, you know. Yep, that's God in His all, oh, isn't He just that is God. awesome, amazing? <laughs> yes, that is God. All right, praise the Lord. Thank you, Sister Precious. Everybody, listen, we're, we're a bit over tonight, but I thank you for be, being here. I know some had to drop off before. You give God thanks. Um, just the as we're as we're wrapping up, yes, we want to give, give God honor and praise for all things. Um, though these, these short videos that you see us send us at send out at times. Please keep praying for what the Lord is doing through those. He's doing something amazing, phenomenal. TikTok, YouTube, and so on. I mean, it's amazing how many people are liking and sharing 
and subscribing to our different platforms through these simple videos that God is doing something beautiful. And they're coming to a Facebook page and watching services, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The Lord is doing it step by step by step. And he's building this house as he sees fit in his own way, his own time, no timing. And you are a part of this, 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 this process as he's doing this, okay? Thank you for being here. I'll just say a quick prayer. Father, we honor you. We thank you. We praise you, God. We thank you for, for tonight. Um, thank you, God, for the... The, the privilege of, of, of meeting once again this capacity. I pray, God, that each heart was blessed, each heart was encouraged, and we know, God, that in all things, you work for the good of them who love you, who are the call according to your purpose. Thank you for taking us to nature just to show us how the butterfly can be likened to our journey as Christians. Go before us, Father. May we have a restful night, and Father, may we never be the same having been transformed on the God, this met metamorphosis that you've taken us on uh, in our Christian journey. And we, we declare tonight in the name of Jesus that our latter shall be greater than our former. Father, you are, this is truly your doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. Hear our prayers. We look to you with grateful hearts and say thanks in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Good night, everyone. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Have a restful Good night. night. Be blessed. Yes. Thank you. All right. Good night, everyone. Good night. 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 Good night.